Okay. Yeah. Pollination. Oh, we're talking about the pollination. Yeah. Uh, as I said, if I can just make an example, maybe I'll take uh, the granatilla plant as well as the closena plant. Yeah. Especially those two, the granatilla is also called the passifolia. Okay. So it's also a host plant of a butterfly. Yeah. And the closena is also a host plant of a butterfly, but this one is for the swallow tails only. This one is for the acria. So on the granatilla plant, the butterfly will come and it will it is going to get the nectar on flowers there so it feeds on few flowers there then it changes it comes to the closena it comes with the wet proposes from the nectar when it gets on the on the flower of the closena it doesn't get the nectar there but what it gets uh, or, 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 when it it, it 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 brings the proposes searching inside it leaves some of the nectar there inside okay. so many butterflies do the same thing on these two plants next to them because they, have, they both have flowers. So in the evening when the June comes, uh, at the end of the day, yeah. it lays uh, on the flowers, inside the flowers, on leaves, stems, branches. Uh, and in the morning, the sun comes up. When it comes up, some of the June evaporates and some of the June melts. The one that melts, even the one that is inside the flower, it will melt and, and will melt with this nectar. So by the time the branches consume some of the water from flowers, leaves. They also consume this one with the nectar here. So when it gets on the stem down there, it is able to activate some of the organs that are not active. Because since this one never had the nectar, there were some of the organs that are not active. So at last, when the flower falls, this plant wasn't going to produce a, a, a fruit. So now, in the stem, they activate that that's the same uh, organ. Then, after some time, the flowers come out. They are able to contain the nectar from its plants because all the the, the, the organs are active now. They were activated. They are activated by the nectar from a different plant. When they fall, then the fruits come out because now it is active. Those fruits will be eaten by some animals and the seeds will fall on the ground. In some plants, you get that the, no fruits coming out, are coming out, but after the flower, then the seeds remain. Those seeds fall on the ground, then they bring another plant. <coughs> so when they have brought another plant, it means uh, the more we have plants, the more we have oxygen. And also the fresh, the fresh oxygen, because the leaves of the plants are, are able to clean some of the, pollutant, the pollutants. Yeah. Uh, they get left on the leaves and then we get the fresh air on the other side. So the pollination process is important because it brings fresh air to us, which is done by these species like butterflies, bees, etc. So they bring fresh oxygen indirectly to the nature. Any additions? Well, those things I'm not familiar with this. No. I look at this one butterfly that just went past here. Which one? There the yellow one? Yeah. That's that, the African. That is the uh, black border. Oh, that's the black border, but it's yeah. yellow. The yellow yeah, one. It's yellow. It has, <laughs> oh, it has a black line on top of the front wing and it's named out of it. Okay. That brings us to an interesting topic. How come that a butterfly that we see is yellow? You call it instead the black butter, but we see it yellow. <laughs> oh, there is this. I don't know whether it's a law, but it is called the nomenclature. The nomenclature? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a law. Or maybe a rule. Yeah. Of naming things. Yeah. Uh, you need to use different aspects. Okay. When you name them. Like some of the trees are named uh, from growing in the water, yeah. like water lilies. Yeah. Uh, and the swallowtails, some of them are called the Cetra swallowtail. We also have a citrus plant. A so citrus plant, yeah. <coughs> they look at many things. Others are named out of their actions. So they have different names, but at last they made they, they make it sure that that name uh, is able to relate to a butterfly. Yeah. It might be a behavior or anything, but it, mu it must relate to its life. <coughs> so for that black border, there are many yellow butterflies. Other butterflies 
look like yellow but they are called the whites yeah so now <laughs> others are yellow class yeah zulu zulu path yeah. so they, they never had a straight but all those butterflies they are yellow name. that's why they had to search for something else at least on its own they switch to switch that butterfly yeah yeah others they look their colors their color patches and then they give them a name like the green pendant swallow tail yeah Okay, coming to names, uh, you just mentioned the Zulu something. Zulu, Zulu bath. The Zulu bath. Yes. The Zulu bath. Now, why are all the names of all the butterflies, like in the book you, I saw you reading, they are all like in, there are no Zulu names there. They yeah. have, it seems you've been thinking of naming butterflies here. Oh, in is, is this have you been thinking of naming butterflies here? Uh, th that mm. is something I, I only had. Uh, that specialist want, want to do it, but I think I don't know how he's going to do it. But he wants to do it because when he tried to research in most other languages, butterflies have different names. But in Zulu, no, we do not have such names in butterflies. It's only a butterfly. Whether it's, whether it's a moth or what. Because it have the same wings, <laughs> they are all called Ispapalazi or Uvemvan. Yeah. So you can see that by that time maybe those people were concentrating on things that they were able to understand. Okay. So when they looked at a small, a small <coughs> thing like this, they never thought of any life out of it. <laughs> so they just had to give one name for yeah. all of them. Uvemvan. Yes. Yeah, oh. Oh. Ispapalazi. Ispapalazi. Yeah. Yes. But now you are having you're thinking of naming butterflies in a sea Zulu. Yes. And it's bringing up politics. Ah, it is not going to bring politics because the same thing is going to happen. That same nomenclature yeah. is going to work. Uh, Which one? The, 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 where you make sure that when naming butterflies, uh, you, you, you make sure that the you, you, you name relate the, the name with, the, uh, with, with their lives. It should relate with their lives, whether it's the behavior or the plant they feed on or how they fly and everything. But it should be when you say a name of a butterfly, the other person should easily understand why you call it like that. If it doesn't, when you explain it, it should be clear to that person. Okay, but now the, com uh, the problem now is when you call that name in English or Latin, the Zulu father. The old man who is there, he does not understand it because it does not mean anything to him. Yeah, that's why. How do we solve that problem? That's why we then have to bring that name of his language so that he understands. So that if he, if you say a name, he doesn't have a clue of why you named it like this. Uh, then he asks. The answer will be simple because the one who named that butterfly will make sure that he also has a reason why that name was put. But I think for that one, it won't need like us here, it's Manuberan. It, it will need most of the communities because this is not ours, these butterflies. They are natural, but at least around, uh, we have a community next to the nature. So we should also include them in all the activities we do so that everything would be fair. So how are we going to make butterflies meaningful to the Zulu speaking people here? both the ones that are parents who yes. haven't gone to school and young people who have gone to school because the young people can understand those English names and those Latin names. Yes. Yeah. The old people do not understand what you mean by those names. Yeah. How are we going to make butterflies meaningful to those old people? Uh, I think it's by <coughs> the role they play in our lives. Like in like, terms of naming, how are we going like, to name oh, butterflies so that they understand? Oh. They will know their language. If I, if anybody can name a butterfly using a certain name of Zulu, yeah. for sure they know that name. And maybe those uh, old ones, like grandpas, grandmas, maybe yeah. they, they will be part of those people who will be naming butterflies. Yeah. Maybe to say as I said, that we, we want the to, we should bring the, the, the community. Yeah. It should just depend. You can see me what the colors, like painted lead. <laughs> But you can say the, the black painted lady. Painted lady. No, a painted lady. It's just a butterfly. Butterfly. It has butterfly. many 
different colors in its, in so its wings. So how would you explain that to your gogo or to your granddad that the black painted lady, we call this one the black painted lady, he was going to ask you, what do you mean by the black painted lady? <laughs> Now then comes a problem. That's where the, the, the problem comes. But at least if they have named them, things would be more easy. Some uh, that question that you're asking right now. We used to I, face I, I once <laughs> faced such a question. Yeah. And I told them that we do not have the Zulu names for butterflies. Yeah. So these English names, some of them, uh, I can understand them. Others, I just don't understand them. So what yeah. I what what I will do is at least for those names that I understand, yeah. I will just try and tell you those names in Zulu at least yeah so that they will at least have some clue of some of the butterflies yeah but what is most important to them uh, and especially for, for the community around the area and the whole South Africa as well is to understand that butterflies are part of nature yeah. and each and every species whether it's a human or an animal but something that lives in earth yeah. rely on one another oh, for the okay. whole life no one lives their yeah. own life. So they can see just a small fly, but at last uh, it has a very important role because you will also get them there in their gardens okay. or maybe in their farms, yeah. feeding on the, on the flowers of, of, the, of the oranges, uh, nunches and all others. They are also doing the pollination during that time there. And the caterpillars that are able to feed on the leaves of the plants also do play a very important role because you know for sure that after you have harvested yeah. uh, your fruits from the plant, you need to then try and prune it yeah. or maybe trim it so that in the next season or next year for, for on the same season, yeah. they are able to bring big fruits and many fruits, unlike this season. Yeah. So they are also able to do that when they feed on the leaves, they finish the leaves, they are pruning them naturally. That's why out, outside there in the bushes, there are so many trees, others get dry, they fall down, but there are more other trees out. Okay. It's because of, of all those small species that we don't yeah. even understand how they live. So if you went to like tabulate the various questions that